Boom! Welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about whether gyms are hotbeds of toxic masculinity and judgment, and whether eating white rice is as bad as eating candy. Is that even possible? In the second half of this episode, we coached four live callers on questions like, I had a concussion, my doctor is telling me I shouldn't work out, should I listen to her? And questions such as, my elbow hurts, I have pain, what should I do about it? One last thing. Thank you, everyone, who subscribed to our Mind Pump Clips channel. It's growing rapidly, all because of you. But if you haven't subscribed yet, go over to Mind Pump Clips, subscribe, and enjoy short clips from the show. All right, here comes the show. The idea that gyms are some of the most unaccepting, judgmental places on earth is complete bullshit. It's not just skewing the truth. It's actually the opposite of the truth. One of the most accepting places on earth for anybody who simply wants to improve their health is the gym. Doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, white, black, overweight, underweight, doesn't matter. If you're in there working hard, people are very, very accepting. You know, I blame, you know who I blame on this freaking bullshit myth mm. the most? Planet Fitness. Ooh. You know why? Because they're in our space. So yeah. when they say something, like if you're a gym and you say something about the gym industry, mm -hmm people are more likely to take it seriously. And what they did is they took this myth, which is false, and we'll get into that. It's the it's not just false, it's the opposite of the truth. But not only did they take it, but then they built a marketing uh, strategy around it with their lunk alarm, with their commercials showing these meatheads right. who are super unaccepting and you know super judgmental and no, you know judgment-free zone, right? They built that in their gyms. And that's why I don't like gyms. Matt, we're not a gym. We're Planet Fitness. Gave people free pizza, made super cheap memberships, knowing no one's going to show up. That's really their model. And um, it's super annoying when I hear people, and here's why it's annoying. I want to help people so badly. And what this myth is doing is it's preventing people from taking that first step of walking into the gym to improve their health. And you guys know as well as I do, that first step is the hardest step to take. Well, I, uh, you're not always right, but I, I do feel like I should give you your credit when you are. I think this was something that you called a long time ago that uh, this was next, that they would start attacking, you know, fitness and gyms and people pursuing uh, uh, their Self health. Self-improvement. Yeah. And I, you know, so, and I remember when you first said it and I was like, really, you think it's going to go that route? Like, it's not going to go that far. I really didn't think it was going to go that far. I didn't think that we, we would get to this point where, cause I just thought it was so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, there's no way they're going to come after people that are, you know, trying to build these gyms and help people out and that are exercising and improving their, but they absolutely have, have turned it into well, a toxic max masculinity yeah. type of conversation. Or that's really fat I, Yeah. And I understand why like planet fitness, they decided to angle that uh, and, and basically put their attention on, you know, a fractional percentage of, of people that might come in and, and sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's just sort of like the human factor, right? In any kind of collection of a group of people that are, are together, you're going to have like an asshole in the group every now and then, you know? And so to, to, to highlight just that one asshole that's like inconsiderate and going around and doing all this stuff is pure nonsense. But to them, it works because it's like, you know, they're marketing it as like, this is like, you know, just for us and, and it's not for all the, the meatheads out there. And so, you know, they capitalize on that, but in terms of, you know, deterring everybody from going to the gym, like what are we even talking about it's, now? It's just purporting a, a complete false myth. It's completely false. Look, if you're, I don't care who you are. I don't care what your political affiliation is. I don't care where you come from. I don't care if you're rich or poor. When you go to the gym, the most hardcore gyms, and you're working hard trying to improve your health and your fitness, you will not find a more accepting place on earth. Yeah. Literally, there yeah. is not a place on earth that is more accepting. Try it out. Go into a gym and try to make yourself stand out, but then actually work out hard or try to improve your health and fitness and watch what the meatheads do. Watch what yeah. the- They'll super celebrate your success. And they'll help you. They'll you help know, you. You know, I look, I, I get why some of this exists. I, I hate the fact that Planet Fitness uh, legitimized it. But I get why some of it exists. When you walk into it, especially a serious gym, it's intimidating because it's always intimidating going to a place where everybody seems so focused. Like, I don't care what it is, what that space is. Mm -hmm. You can go into a company, walk in and see everybody working hard. And you, if you are not familiar with what's going on, it's going to feel intimidating. So I get that part. But don't push this bullshit uh, myth. And, you know, by, by the way, the re what sparked this is I saw a post in Men's Health. 
and it's about uh, a gentleman, Ilya Parker, okay? Founder of Decolonizing Fitness. The name alone should tell you right there that the guy's full of shit. But that's, the, that's the name of, fit, of a fitness Of chain? their organization. <laughs> and it says, it's helping make gyms safe spaces for everyone. You will not find a more safe space than the gym. As long as you're trying to work on improving your health, it's the, literally the most accepting place on earth. Yeah. It really is. I, I can't think of a, a place that's more accepting. I mean, I, look, we've been in gyms our whole life. I've seen people who are complete opposites yeah. on the spectrum so have, of and, and, but working out hard together. Diverse environment you can immerse yourself in. So I have I have a different take on this. Um I'm less I'm less irritated or frustrated by it and I'm actually more impressed with it. I think that and, and even the, like I didn't even know that about the the name of this guy's business and what they're what they're trying to build. It's actually really smart. It's really smart because we know that the people that you know, go to gyms consistently uh, that are, you know, buff and wear tank tops and all this stuff like that. We know that they are not the best customer. They Now, why? Because they they use the equipment up. They put the most wear and tear. They they don't miss the gym. And uh, and they, they normally know enough. They don't enough. buy your supplements. They, they don't yeah, buy your products. They, they, yeah, they don't buy a lot of the products. They know... Uh, they know what's competitive pricing, and so they don't get the best deal. I mean, they are the worst customer when you think about it from a business standpoint. The best customers are the flaky, inconsistent, uh, buy into anything, uh, don't know if a gym price should be nine dollars or seventy dollars. Like, I mean, and and then also and don't use your stuff. And right? they, they exactly yeah. they sign up, and th there's lots of statistics on this. I remember the first time that I saw this as a manager and was like, "Whoa, that's crazy!" I didn't realize it was that much. The average person gets a gym membership. Uh, they use it inconsistently for three months. They stop using it and they continue to pay for seven plus months. Yeah, and by the way, that number goes up the cheaper the membership is. Absolutely. So uh, if you're paying nine bucks a month, what Planet Fitness is doing- Because, the, because, it, it, because it has to be averaged out. It's averaged with the, and it's averaged with the consistent meatheads and you know tank top buff people that come every day. So that's why it's that number. Which if they're you, turning away. If you gear it towards- a place like Planet Fitness, which again, I think brilliant marketing. They're like, oh, here we go. Let's, we'll, we totally will ignore the people that are, that are the serious gym goers. And in fact, we're going to shame them and we're going to, and we're going to be like the opposite of them. But you know why? They represent a less than 5% of the population. We're going to go after the 95 who just want to say they have a membership or that they're trying to work out and exercise because we know that they are not going to show up to the gym and use our equipment. We know that they're the most susceptible to buying gimmicky, you know, fat burners and things like that that we can monetize after. We know that they'll end up paying us long after they're done even using the place. Like, so we are going to cater them and then we're going to put out messaging like this that just attracts more of them to the gym. And and it makes our competitors look like terrible places for people who right, want to get right, healthy and fit. Right. So and, I, and, and you pay, look, by the way, the free pizza that they give away, also brilliant because if you're, here's what they're they're thinking. They're thinking, and I know exactly what they're thinking. I'll, I'll put money on this. They know it's nine bucks a month, meaning it's too cheap to cancel. Okay, so that's the idea. The idea is make a membership so cheap that a person who doesn't use it will look at their bank account and be like, I know I don't use it, but it's only nine bucks a month. You know, let me just, I guess I might as well just keep it. And then what they'll do is they'll justify it by the free pizza. You know what? I've eaten pizza there like four times. That alone costs more than nine bucks. And they keep people paying and not using it. But the part that really pisses me off is this false idea that it's this terrible, judgmental, unaccepting place. And that people who are serious about fitness are the most judgmental, unaccepting people on earth. That's so false and so wrong, and I'm sick and tired of hearing this complete bullshit. It's the op. It's not even like a distortion of the truth. It's the opposite. Literally, the most accepting place you can go is the gym. I mean, it's not true, but how often is is marketing stuff ever true? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You if you uh, they're just, they're if just, you yeah, but how often you, is marketing if the you opposite if you of smoke truth? Marlboro cigarettes? It doesn't mean you're going to look super hot on a on a horse and get <laughs> these hot chicks that are chasing you. Yeah, like, but it's imagine like we've been marketing this way forever. Yes, but imagine if Marbo said, uh, "Hey, our cigarettes cure cancer." It's in other words, <laughs> did, it's not. Did skewing. we pitch that at one point? <laughs> Wasn't that a pitch at one point? Well, they got in big trouble for it. I don't think they said it cured cancer. But my point is, the Marlboro may be skewing the truth and distorting it. 
but they're not going in the opposite direction. Oh, you I, see mean, what I'm saying? I, I mean, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. I think that it, marketing in general has is, is gone the, anything to get eyes, right? Anything to get attention. And, and, and I think the game is, I think the game has even evolved and changed to this, that it's like, I mean, we saw this with Gillette. We've seen this with Nike. We've seen sometimes the game is e even getting bad publicity because then you have podcasters like us talking to potentially millions yeah. of people about a business I didn't even know about until five minutes ago. So, you know, the, to me, it's brilliant. It's yeah. brilliant. It's on just the, more predatory behavior of, it, of preying off your insecurities and fears, like uh, embarking on a new um, you know, uh, transformational change for and self improvement, and it's just like it's that's what's so gross about it yes. to me. It's like in this environment where people are actually like putting forth the the effort and uh, energy towards like uh, you know bettering their life, bettering their their body, improving their overall health. It's like now we got to battle this bullshit that's already like. Uh, you know, something that they might be thinking stepping into a gym yes. environment like that. They're creating the narrative for them to justify this. Yes, I mean, they also, they also, and I don't disagree with your points both of you are making. Uh, you're but, saying it makes a lot of money. I, I, I agree not with only, you. Not only that, though, but it also gives people like, it gives people like myself an opportunity to counter it. So uh, one of the things I love about when somebody mm. lies to somebody in my space or bullshit is that I know when I get a hold of them and I give them the truth, I'm going to change their life and they'll be forever with so me. So you're grateful that that they're giving us great content for Mind Pump. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I just have a different... And, and I'm also... Adam the reframer. I, yeah. well, yeah. And, and I, I also think that. that all most of us in here, I think, are, are capitalists. And I think that it's it and free market guys. And so, oh yeah, I don't think we should. I don't think we should. Right, right. And, and I know, I know, you're not suggesting. No, we're just that. pushing back. But I mean, right? as a true capitalist or a true free market person, then I, then I embrace all bad ideas, all ideas, including the bad ones, and the and all information, including the bad information, and then allow me to be able to provide a better service or provide the truth. And if you if you find a way, okay. We're all if the the pool of, of the world of people, we're all trying to get get them into the health and fitness sphere, whether it be purely to make money off them or truly to help people. But in the, the day, we're trying to attract them. Mm -hmm. And uh, for decades, uh, gyms have failed at doing a good job at that. Planet Fitness has hacked into a way to attract people that never probably would have been attracted to the gym by selling them some bullshit, but then gets them actually one step closer to potentially meeting me. Uh, that's hmm. how I look. Oh, at it. I see. Well, yeah, I mean, that's. Mm. I guess you could reframe it that way. But you know, here, let me put a little bit more salt on the wound. Okay, <laughs> it's not just Planet Fitness. It's not just um, you know some gyms capitalizing or supplement companies capitalizing. It's not just our space. This has now moved to the political sphere. It is now fat shaming to want to lose weight and improve your health. It is now toxic masculinity to build muscle and to get stronger. <laughs> it is now a place that radicalizes young men. By the way, I'm not making this up. Yeah. There, I've read many, many, many articles trying to make this case that fitness is somehow this toxic thing that building well, muscle getting strong by strength yes and so now it's become this and it's become politicized and when things become politicized they become poison and they become divi they divide people well it's very a hard it's place. a slippery slope and you know to defend your point on that is that uh like, I don't want and, to hear and where i would be way more riled up is if it continues to go the direction that you're saying uh, you know, and we start shutting gyms down, or we start policing, or protests happen outside. Right? Gym, or, yeah. So. If now, if it starts getting like that, like okay, now you're gonna now. Although you're I doubt, get, I doubt they're gonna want to protest. I, I doubt that too. <laughs> I doubt you're picking a fight with the wrong group. The wrong people. Yeah. So I, I, I doubt it. Um, but I could see like the concern. You imagine and, it's leg day. Let me in my gym. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I get, I see, I see where the concern comes from. Yeah. I see where the, I, and so, and I think I would probably be more riled up if it, if it started to get pushed that point. But I just, I mean, I think that's just. I'm, I'm, look, I'm reading the tea leaves, and I think it's going to get worse. Uh, we're seeing the politis, how a uh, political diet has become in this direction. Fitness has now become is becoming a, a battleground with this. I mean, I, there was another post the other day where there was a woman who's you know PhD or whatever, and she's like being underweight. Uh, actually is worse for you than being overweight. Yet we never talk about people who are underweight. So I'm like, okay, so I got irritated. And I posted underneath that and I said, first off, uh, this is very misleading and I can see what you're trying to do. And then she said something about fat shame. I said, I, see, I can see what you're, you're trying to do. I said, but statistically when someone's underweight in a modern society, it's because they have cancer or an illness or they have an eating disorder. 
Okay. I said, so that is a, 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 a bias selection of people who are sick. Just like if you look at sleep and you say, oh, good, you know, getting good sleep every night is good for you. Well, when you look at people who sleep more than 10 hours a night, they have terrible health. Is it the sleep? No, it's because people who sleep that much are depressed, uh, can be suicidal, have illness, you know, have hormonal issues, stuff like that. So I said, this is extremely misleading. And so she went back and forth with me. Oh, you just don't like, literally her words were, just say you don't like fat people. And I'm like, do you even know? <laughs> I said, do you even know who I, like, am? I, I love said, them. I make, That's where I make most of my money is I, helping I, I, those people. I said, this is my, my career has been made on helping people <laughs> in this case. And I said, and what percentage? Obviously, you hate fat. I said, what percentage of people Obviously. in America are, have poor health due to being underweight versus overweight? I said, we're talking about the issue that's the big problem. The big problem is not we don't have enough nourishment. Okay, the, 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 that's those are sick people, and that's different. And by the way, doctors do talk to people when they show up and they're underweight. It shows up on your blood panels. That's usually how doctors give advice. So it's just, again, it's this whole like crazy message. It's like they're attacking the best place for people to improve themselves and their health and to be accepted. You know, if you, if you feel unaccepted in the world, cause you're different than everybody. I mean, you can be weird as hell. Look, I've run gyms for a long time and I'm gonna tell you something right now. I've seen what could be considered some of the weirdest people in the world, but come to the gym and because they work hard or because they hit a PR or because they're lifting a certain amount of weight or because they improved, everybody in the gym, it's like nobody cares. They don't yeah. care that you've got, that you look weird and that you, whatever. They, they all come up to you like, hey man, you, good job or what's whatever. The, now, it's the ultimate uh, like crab in the boiling pot that, uh, you know, one tries to escape and then they pull them right back Instead down. Instead of trying to get out. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and that's just what I see happening in, in every part of our culture right now. Like nobody wants anybody to succeed and win. And like, we got to write all these articles to pull people back down into the fucking depths of, of despair. Yeah. <laughs> don't you think this is just Fuck kind of off? Uh, dude? <laughs> don't you think this is just kind of a product of, uh, of the internet? Like, I mean, <clears throat> well, I think the internet's a tool that's being used. For well, sure. yeah. So, I mean, I think that when we see stuff like this, um, I mean, just 20 years ago, like a moron like this that would start a company. It would never get off the ground. It would never get any news. It would never get any attention. But because we were so big, we're so connected, you can actually find, you know, 10,000 idiots that align. And those 10,000 idiots can be dispersed over the entire country or world and would have never met each other in real life. But now because of the internet, those 10,000 idiots can latch onto an idea like this and all come together and be this loud internet voice and make a lot of people feel like this is a really popular and I, and it's really not, it's well, really not how people feel. Well, I get what you're saying. Now here's why I think this is different. Cause you're right with what you're saying. I mean, we didn't have a flat earth society before because they couldn't find each other. Like, you know, nobody <laughs> believed in that, but you go on the internet you can find a bunch yeah, you were the people. one idiot in yeah. town, but when you have 10,000 towns, yeah. you know, it's- You found, you found you, a bunch all, of people. Yeah, they all yeah. found each other. No, here's why this is a little different, because the average person who is ignorant, and I don't mean this in a negative sense, right? What I mean is you- Just, you just unaware. You just don't know, right? The average person who's never really been in the gym or the gym culture or ever, you know, really worked out consistently, which is a lot of people, when they go, when they look at it, when they, first off, before they even step into a gym, their idea of a gym- are a bunch of like mean, strong people who are like, get off my equipment. Oh, you're wimp. Oh, you're fat type of deal. Then they actually walk into a gym. Maybe they walk by a gym. They look in and it's intense. And it's true. Like the more hardcore, quote unquote, a gym is, right? The more serious, consistent members it has, the more of an intense culture it's going to have, which, which I love. But I could see how if you have no experience walking in. I remember the first time, I walked into an MMA gym when I wanted to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I had a little bit of knowledge of judo. I'd never been in an MMA gym and it felt intense. It felt a little intimidating. And of course they were super accepting and cool and all, but I could see where that comes from. So they have this idea, but then what happened is, is marketers took that idea, this kind of underlying ignorance, and they said, hey, we can create an enemy. We can make all the other gyms the enemy and say, we're the saviors because we're going to ban this fictional judgmental lunk or whatever they called them, right? We're going to ban these people. We're not going to let them deadlift. We're not going to let them lift heavy weight. We're going to set off an alarm when, when they're in our gym. Like, it's like, it's like me opening up a restaurant and saying, Hey, we don't have the chupacabra in here. Like they don't exist to begin with. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, that's what happened is they took an idea 
Because how many times have you guys? Yeah, but when you when you have when you, how many times have you guys experienced that? By the way, a, a new person hires you and they're intimidated, but then two months into it, they're like, "Wow, this is way different than I thought." Yeah, but okay. So that's the other side of that coin is this: is that I mean, think about uh, some of the most impactful movies that you ever watched. A lot of times, it was a movie that somebody like told me was going to be terrible. Oh, don't watch that. It's awful. So I go into it going like, this is going to be shitty. I'm not going to like it. And then what ends up happening? You, If it's a movie, you end up liking. Like you end up liking. You're like, oh my God, that was really good. It was wrong. It exceeds your expectations. That's right. So the same thing is going to happen when people are promoting bullshit like this. When they're when they're telling lies about what it is like to go to these gyms or get Is you already have this, this idea that it's going to be so. And then you go. And it's the complete opposite. That's if they and decide it, to And go. now you're in love because it blows your mind. But to that's your, if they to go. To your competition of ideas point, like that's what I do feel is, you know, the, the result of what's going to happen is people are, <laughs> that's not working for me. Not going to, you're not improving myself is not working and it's not going to work at all. And so, you know, for, for whatever message is being pushed out there, it's wrong. So it's going to end up, uh, you know, being revealed at some point to that individual who got sucked weren't, into Weren't some of your guys' best clients these clients? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it just sucks because it's like it's, we're, we're, my, 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 we're sort of the my, shepherds my out there trying to pull clients, them in. My life for clients that were with me forever, they they rarely ever was the guy or the girl who was like excited to come to the gym or thought that the gym was. But they live. took that first step. Is my point? You're right. Okay, How many you're, people are not going to take that step? Now? Yeah, you know, okay. Well, I'll, I'll make. Okay, look, I'll, some people are not going to look, because of that. You know, I'm but point to Justin's to, point, eventually they're going to. You know, years are going to go by and they're like this. You know, being anti the gym because it's it's racist, sexist, uh, and it's toxic masculinity isn't working for me, so maybe I should go yeah. look into it. Well, that's years. Or I got a couple yeah. friends who Buzz are telling me the opposite. That but they're that's, throwing out there. You that's know? years, and that's a lot of potential damage. That's a lot of damage it's going to make on people's health. Look, I'll, 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 I'll make a statement right now that I know you guys will agree with. If somebody went to, let's, let's, give, let's give two gym comparisons. Globo, you know, commercial gym versus the most hardcore powerlifting gym you can find. I mean, literally, you walk in there, there's death metal, chalk, and the equipment's rusty, okay? Yeah, the dungeon. And you're, and you're obese, and you've never exercised before, and you walk into either both places. Which place is going to offer you the most free advice, free help, help, and be the most accepting? Yeah, the dungeon. The dungeon. Every time. I swear to God, the global gym's not going to give a shit half the time. Oh, people the, in there don't even know what they're doing. No. You go into the powerlifting gym, everyone's going to look at you and be like, hey, man, congratulations for coming in. How can we help you? Well, I'm, you know, I've never worked out before. No problem. I work out on this day. Let me help. For free. You'll get a bunch of free help and care. That's the truth. It's the complete opposite of what they keep promoting. And now it's gotten too far. Now it's, and it's, and it's it pisses me off because I know there's people. My mom is one of these people. She's like intimidated. Even, and I worked in gyms my whole life. And she's like, well, it's kind of, you know, but people are going to look at me and I'm like, mom, nobody, not only do people not care, but if they see you working out, people want to help and they support you. And she finally went, I got her membership. My dad goes, he finally took her and she's like, you're so right. It was like, it's such a great place. I'm like, you know, Ma, I've been telling you this for 20 years, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it makes me sad because yeah. you're preventing people from really helping themselves by, by putting out this complete uh, bullshit. Welcome back. Here's the giveaway for today's podcast episode, MAPS Aesthetic, the bodybuilder-inspired MAPS program. Here's how you win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section, right under your comment. We'll let you know that you won free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, we got a sale going on right now. Two workout programs are 50% off. The first one is MAPS Symmetry. Great program. Great to balance out the body, develop a nice symmetrical physique. The second program on sale is MAPS Strong. Great for muscle and strength and performance. This is a strongman-inspired workout program. So both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get signed up. All right, here comes the show. Uh, I got another interesting study to, pull, to talk about that's kind of along these lines. There was a study with the headline. I'm going to read you guys the headline. And um, I showed Jessica this yesterday because I was like, can you tell me what's wrong with this, this headline versus a study? Here's the headline, New York Post. White rice is as bad as candy when it comes to heart health. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Yeah. What a misleading title. Now, here's Brought to you by Nestle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Boy, this is terrible. Yeah. By the way, I was uh, thinking about this and I'm going to get into why this Did is. you look who funded it? Just yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about the study. Okay. It's okay. not that who funded it. 
It's that the New York Post, all these online uh, publications get paid on clicks and views for their advertising. Right. Yeah, it has to so be they honestly, sensational. They, they honestly don't give a shit. No. They just want, they know this is going to fly because when you read that, the average person is going to be like, oh my God, white rice is so bad for me. So the studies show that, here's what the study showed. Refined grains were associated with an increased risk of heart disease. Refined grains. Okay. So they said, because rice technically can be considered refined since it's not brown rice, can be put in that category. But the reality is people who eat a lot of refined grains also eat a lot of what? Where do you find a lot of refined grains? Mm -hmm. Ultra processed foods. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find a bunch of people that overeat because that's what those foods promote. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be sicker. But New York Post is like, how can we make this? Like, you know, what are we going to put in the title? Ultra processed foods. Everybody knows that. Refined grains. Like nobody's going to care. White rice is as bad as candy. Let's do that. The yeah. study showed none of that. It just showed people who ate the most refined grains got the most sick. But yeah, that's because their refined grains are what you find in ultra processed foods. It's so stupid. I know. It's, so, yeah. it's so annoying. <laughs> but you know, I'm with you, Adam. Mind Pump wouldn't exist if it wasn't for all this bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it's keeping us in business at the end of the day. I mean, these crazy articles and, and misleading information. So uh, I guess that's one way to look no, at it. No, it is. I mean, I, I really do believe that. It gives us an opportunity to to discuss it in long form. And again, I mean, how many people, I mean, how many people at first glance uh, judge uh, the three of us? I mean, sure. that's happened. And, but then when you get to know us and you get to hear us talk about and communicate health and fitness, many times uh, we change your mind. And, and a lot of times those people end up becoming like either radical fans or lifelong clients. And it's because they already had this idea in their head, whether it was put in there because of an article or going to fitness, the, you know, the, the planet fitness or whatever. And then they were told by these people or told by politicians. And then they come in and they get a different experience. Yeah. And then, now, not only are they excited, but they're like, then they become, they become radicalized because they become so passionate because they were turned off. They, they become so. evangelists. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and because they were so, they were told the opposite and it was so, and they're, then they, they become mad because they're like, God, for years I stayed away from the gym because people told me it was like this. And then I met Justin and Sal yeah. and it was like, oh my God, like blew my mind. And like, and so they go out and they tell, you know, 10, and by the way, them going out and telling you know, 10 or 15 or 20 people, in my opinion, is far more powerful than a stupid viral article that's designed to get thousands of clicks because th th those people, I mean, we, we do, we trust, we trust referrals from our friends and the people that we love. And the most. Yeah, the most. Yeah. So even that, and just like with a movie, like I'll see a Rotten Tomatoes review at, you know, 30, which I would normally never watch that. But if, you know, well, maybe not for you guys, but if Doug goes, hey, <laughs> Adam, you got to watch this. You're going to like it. I'll go, I'm going to watch it. Doug told me I should watch it. I trust Doug. His, his, I'll it, give you the best sci-fi <laughs> yeah. you could ever Justin hope and I for, like some weird stuff. Please, you know dude. What's, you know what's funny about the white rice article is uh, that, so brown rice would be considered unrefined. Mm -hmm. uh, brown rice is actually worse for you than white rice. So a lot, of, a lot of people digestive wise, right? Well, brown rice has anti-nutrients. Uh, uh -huh. So these are nutrients. Uh, these are new, these are, Compounds that bind to nutrients in your body, making them unabsorbable. So you can actually cause nutrient deficiencies. It's harder to digest. So people get more bloating and more issues with brown rice. White rice is actually healthier mm -hmm. than brown rice. Now, when it comes to carbohydrates, eating your protein first and fats, if, if you're worried about things like blood sugar, Do you know those, that's what takes care of that. Those were two, okay, two of the biggest like uh, aha moments for me as like a trainer and, and being in the space, right? Because I, I fell in the eating brown rice yeah. trap. There's two huge that like changed my life as far as eating forever. Uh, brown rice to white rice and chicken breast to chicken thighs. Yeah. <laughs> forever changed my life. Like I was so stuck in this like brown rice and chicken breast, right? Mm. All to save like what? Like 120 calories tops, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. In a meal or whatever. And avoid the fat from uh, yes. uh, the dark meat, right? And, and and you're talking about, I mean, you come, you take a, a meal where someone made chicken breast and brown rice and you put it next to a white rice and chicken thighs meal and you're talking like night and day differences and what you're getting value-wise. You have to choke one of them down. Oh my yeah. God. And, and and chicken thighs and white rice is, is a go-to staple meal that and I've, I've never looked back. I can't remember the last time I had a chicken breast because of that. It's like, it, both that and the brown rice thing, I think, were like these aha, Same. huge moments. 100%. <laughs> well, speaking of food, um, the reviews are in for, I know you asked for reviews. Yes. On one of our new partners, uh, Creatures of Habit, they're, um, they're protagonists, which is a, it's basically, a, you know, they're going to change the name to Meal One, which I, I think is better. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a morning meal made with oatmeal. It's high in protein, plant protein. 
vitamin D3, it's got probiotics, it's got uh, omega-3 fatty acids, all in a packet that's like flavored, we think really good. Adam, you told people, give us reviews, let us know what you so, think. So I, this is funny to this, my experience of doing this. So I've never done this before. There was the first time I'd ever like, I went on our forum, I went on my story. Like I've n actually never asked our audience in seven years, like, Go buy a product. They've never said, please go buy this. I'm very curious to hear your feedback because we're looking to invest in it. Now, the, the part that I find is a little bit ironic to me because I consider like our forum, like our family, like a lot of them have been there since the very beginning of this podcast. And I've got a lot of love for the, the people in that group. And 100% uh, every single person that responded to me on my DMs, which is obviously thousands in comparison to the, the hundreds of people that would respond inside the forum. So a much bigger pool of people, 100% across the board. Everybody that went out and bought it, that DM me afterwards was like, absolutely love it. We're tagging and sharing it like crazy. So 100%. The only place I got any sort of negative feedback was from our fucking forum. <laughs> our forum was the only people that got on there and said the things like, it's so expensive compared to this. You can make oatmeal for that. I'm just like, oh my God, dude. Our form sometimes I'm like I love you guys but like we and I went on this like rant because it actually really annoyed me because I hadn't asked ever to, and to oh, get I a miss those rants oh. I used to do those all the time <laughs> dude so I just you know when we started this and this is for the podcast because we I haven't said this to the podcast I said it on our forum and but it, the podcast should know too is that you know, long before partners and advertising with this, this podcast, we actually were considering never doing advertising. We said, we don't necessarily need it. The programs will monetize even before that when we we're making no money, we didn't have to do this to make money. So the idea was like, we don't ever want to be influenced by a partner on what we're going to communicate or say. Then eventually opportunity came this way. We still said no to it. Then eventually it was like, you know what? I don't mind introducing our audience to stuff that we love or that we're into. So right. let's start to go after partners. Right. And the goal was always to look for things in spaces, whether it be uh, athleisure wear, like what I'm wearing, or it be a really nice mug that we drink or the best CBD out. What we looked for was the best in the space of things that we Interventions use. for sleep. Yeah, you we know, did not, I didn't go like- Category like that. I didn't search Amazon for like, what's the cheapest product yeah. I could find that's athleisure wear? Or what's the cheapest CBD oil that's out there? No, that was not the idea. It was like, we went after what we thought was the best. And to me, I, I have yet to find a product like Creatures of Habit, which, by the way, I ate every single day for four years straight. Like every, I did not miss a, a, a morning oatmeal when I was competing. That was like a staple. And I used to make all this. So I totally get when people are like, oh, you can make it for that. Like, yeah, no, I did it. I did it for but four But you got to get like all the seeds. You got to oh, get the omegas. You got to get the, the yeah. probiotics and then the protein. Yes. Yeah. And by the way. And you're, what are you going to save? And then, the seven. And then, after, save and then yeah. after you do all of that. It definitely don't taste as good as my boy, who's a chef. His that he put together. Yeah. yeah. So his tastes way better than mine. It has way more stuff in, than than mine did. So for me, it was like, oh my god, yeah. I love this. Well, product. I think it's important to explain why we would want the best. I mean, because what we always promote that's that you should always stick to, and that's ideal is whole foods and exercise. Like, there's no supplement, there's no product that's going to ever Nothing's match. Nothing's going to substitute that. Yeah. So if you are going to add a supplement or a product. At, because it, it's usually because of convenience or because maybe you're lacking a nutrient or maybe you think it's fun like me. I take supplements because I think it's fun. Then, we, then we're going to go with the best because I don't want to compromise somebody's health for them to save a few bucks because what's cheaper than them buying a cheap supplement is buying no supplements and eating whole natural foods and just exercising. Right. right. So if you want to save money, it, you're not just saving money. The best option across the board is always whole natural foods and exercise and good sleep. Um, but if you want to add a product, if you want to add a supplement, make sure it's good quality. Make sure, otherwise it's not worth it. Otherwise go back to what you were doing before. If it's about money, right? If it's a, if it's a money thing, Whole Natural is going to save you money. Oh, you're talking about the, the the seeds, the protein, the omegas, the probiotic, everything's got in it. I mean, it's, you're talking about a, an incredible first meal of the day. Yeah. So, and it's become that again for me, which has been so nice. And a lot of that is because it's so convenient. It was a little more work for me to chop up my own strawberries yeah. and blueberries and get and add all those nuts and seeds. It was just so now I literally rip it out and pour some hot water in it. I'm good to go. Yeah. So all right, let's it. change gears. Adam, did you hear about Elon this morning? Did you see the news? No, I'd love your opinion. Okay, no, 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 no. What the deal? Remember the the offer that he gave to Twitter? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it fifty dollars or fifty four dollars okay. a share? Or something okay, like that? what happened? He's put it back on the table Wait, for the same yeah. amount. What? Breaking news. He literally just came out and said, you know what? All that original offer, I'll do it. I'll even, buy Twitter for that. Even much. after all the uh, investigation on like the actual number of what? Uh, I have no Twitter idea. members okay. like being bots. 
Okay, okay, so back me up here a little bit. So he's the the he original. Said it's back on the because he on the table. okay the, the way it went, he, he he made the offer. Then they did their due diligence. Mm-hmm. They realized that there's a good chance that there's a ton of like bots on here. So then he pulled the offer off the table and said, "Until you can prove to me how many bots are in here, I'm not offering that high of a price for this." Now you're saying to me he came back and is saying, "I will give that high price." That's now? what I'm Going reading back right to the now. Original so, offer as of wow. the recording of this podcast. Wow. This is breaking news. Here's the one of the headlines. Elon Musk told Twitter he's willing to buy the company at the original $44 billion deal after months of trying to back out. And there's not a whole ton of detail as to why. So this will be at $54.20 per share, which, by the way, okay, so- does anybody know what Twitter's at? Well, let me see what they're at right now as of the... As of this, uh, I'm assuming this is down, after. So I'm assuming that's a good deal. Twitter's at 47.95, yeah. so they're going to be selling for. A, 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 they'll be making money. By the way, that's up. Five percent, maybe on the news. Maybe that's why. Maybe it went up. So okay. So I have a couple. I mean, theories. he must have been evaluating like like if I do pursue it versus I don't. Like you know, backing out how much legal fees and things they're going to slap maybe on this. You know, in terms of it like being a negative versus like pushing forward, and then maybe you know, so he gets ownership, and then eventually it then you know profits in his direction. So I have two theories on it. Either one. Uh, I think Justin could be right. I think that he he did his his due diligence. They realized like it's going to cost us a fuck ton of money to try and get out of this. All to what we were going to try and save, you know, X amount of billion or what that we're going to end up spending X amount and and not own a company if we were to do so. This. Just pure business, right. yeah. So just pure like over, you know, you know, take your take it take a shot on the chin, own it. We and can, that's a good that's a good theory because so, Elon yeah. has proved to be one of the greatest entrepreneurs. Yeah, right. and I, and that theory could actually be numbers. coupled with my second theory, which is and we were actually talking off air about this. So off air before we got on, this is personal stuff that we were. I was saying like, hey, you know, uh, I'm I'm really nervous about the market. I'm scared about it, which makes me feel compelled to go in on it a little bit heavier than I ever have in my life before because I tend to do this when it's really scary. I stay away and I avoid, and then I miss the That's bottom. That's everybody, yeah. right? So I so so I was saying that, and we we're kind of going back and forth and debating. And then you brought up a very good point, and you're like, yeah. I feel the same way too, Adam. But I'm, you know, I'm also watching the big dogs, the Elon Musk. The I'm watching the, you know, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Like they haven't gone back in heavy, so I'm going to kind of pay attention to that. And then I'm like, so maybe this is also a play on Elon realizing that we're kind of near the bottom, and if this is what the bottom looks like for Twitter right now, mm. that there's huge opportunity for growth still even with all the bad news that came out about the bots, even where the market is currently right now. And maybe he thinks we're hovering around the bottom a little bit right now. And it's not that bad of a deal because shit's going to come back up in the market over the next year or two. So I have a third uh, theory because Elon has proven, and, and this one's maybe a bit of a stretch, but I'm going to see if I can make my case. Because, and this is again, this is off the top of my head, this is just literally breaking news, right? Elon has proven to be uh, somewhat principled and he does comment on, affairs that sometimes can negatively affect his pocketbook. For example, Tesla is the number one electric car company in the world. He comes out and says, hey, listen, we cannot get off gas. We cannot get off oil. We need it right now because, and he made the case. And you think, why the hell would he say that when that's going to counter the sales of his cars, right? I think he's somewhat principled. What he did with Ukraine, with his Starlink, he puts, he, Mm-hmm. 80, I don't know how much he spent, 80, I don't know, million dollars worth of Starlink for free in Ukraine so they could, uh, in Ukraine so they could communicate. He just did something for the the hurricane in Florida also. Yeah, so I feel like he's somewhat principled yeah. and I think what he's doing because of his comments, he's looked at social media, he's looked at it, he's called it the town square, the, the modern town square. Mm-hmm. I think he's seeing what's going on and saying, I need to do something. And I hope I could take Twitter Turn it around and make money, but at the very least, I'm going to crack it open, and I'm going to I'm going to offer an alternative to all the other social media platforms that all seem to be in lockstep. So that's my that's <clears throat> one theory. So that there's a, a stretch, but there's a really good chance mm-hmm. actually that all three of those theories are right. That he's calculating it all. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a very good chance that all three of those theories is what is making him go. Okay, he th- he may think we're bouncing along the bottom of the market. I don't think he's going to go much lower. So Twitter's not going to crash much more than mm-hmm. that. To Justin's point, and then to your point. And the, and together collectively, all those things are like okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this because to me, the fact that 
he would go back and say, I'll give what I originally said when he was the one that pulled the offer off the table. It's kind of strange. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I, I really felt like he had all the leverage he at that point. He did have all the leverage, yeah. And, and I really didn't think that Twitter was going to actually... We any, also don't know what's happened behind the scenes, right? We don't, sure. right? Because their lawyers have been going back and right. forth. Right, and, and for all we know, they did find a way to, to hold Yeah, they might it. have something that then, you know, would be a, a, a lot bigger loss than he thought. Like yeah, I mean, pulling out. Because what, what was the... Uh, what was, the, was it like a billion he was going to have to pay if, if, if they were... Able to, in, feet, in fines or I whatever? Mean, he had a good rescinding. case too, though, right? He did, but well, yeah, but to, like Justin was saying, like, what if his lawyers went like, "Hey, we might lose this. You might lose a billion. You know, if do you want to just to prove a point and and not get a company? Do you want to spend a billion potentially? Well, I mean, it could have saved him forty, right? Forty billion. So, what if he does this? What if he goes in, buys it? Now that he owns it, he does a full audit. Real and, and takes the proof and says Twitter's been lying to their shareholders about how many. And then bots. comes back and sues. Yes, <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> that would be epic. Because they're a public company, they have to be honest yeah, about yeah. all the yeah. stuff. Gotta and if he could, if he could show that they've been willing, they've been like willfully ignorant or deceptive, they're screwed. And he can go back and be like, "Hey, you guys actually owe me some money back." Because, Bro, that would be epic if he can do that. Yeah, if he could, if he and maybe that's part of his calculation. Maybe he was like, hey, listen, I'm going to do this. Worst case scenario, we're going to do a real audit. Every, I already made a big stink before. So now I now I actually have some grounds to stand on and be like, listen, I've had this. I've owned this company for two months. I already found out that we have this many bots. You guys lied. And I'm going to sue. And you the, lied to your investors. Yeah, I'm going to sue the shit the out of SEC you. SEC filings were all false. Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? It's like, the, <clears throat> it's like a rich guy goes to a, a business and the business is like, sorry, we're not going to give you a refund. And he's like, let me talk to the manager. I am the manager. So he leaves and he comes back and goes, now I own the store. Yeah, now I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> I know. Hilarious. I wish I could be a fly the on the wall for move. those type of conversations. I'm I'm enthralled by that type of stuff. Like what really, I mean, we all sit out here and speculate. We read headlines. And I think, yeah. I bet nine times out of 10, we're way off. I bet there's really, I mean. I it, mean, it's probably just PR, right? Like they they have something else going on. Like what are we going to tell the public? Yes, no, totally. And behind the scenes, it's really like some other crazy shit. Like some, some billionaires wife got fucked and yeah. so he's like i'm gonna fucking gobble your company up for that shit and you're not gonna come we're not gonna say anything about the you wife sex with my wife yeah i'm buying yeah. your totally company. bro i fully i believe that dude i mean it's like a big it's like a big chess board or a monopoly game for them you know what i'm saying so like buying and selling property and bills with that to us it's huge news but to them it's just another play it's not gonna end either way this goes does not end elon no right and it, and it doesn't end, uh, what's his name, who owns Twitter? It doesn't end either one of them. How it, like, well, goes, Jack so. Dorsey, he's, he's, he's not even he's a major. Part well, he's the, he's the biggest shareholder, though, still. Yeah. Right? Is he still? Yeah, he's single, still. Single yeah, shareholder, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until Elon, right? So Yeah. yeah so. Oh, boy. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I got, I, got some, I got a cool story to tell you guys. So I have a, a, a friend of mine who's kind of been battling um, low-level kind of depressive symptoms and low energy for a little while. And, you know, he's doing all the right stuff, right? He's been, he's been trying to change his diet, exercise, definitely all helped. I told him about the studies on creatine and I had him combine it with uh, acetyl L-carnitine. So acetyl L-carnitine is a form of carnitine that's been shown to have some of these energizing effects in some people. It, it helps them with their moods, their attitudes, whatever. So Live On is a company we work with that has a great product. So he's been taking the creatine and the acetyl L-carnitine. This is now 60 days in. And he's like, dude, I, I could tell a, a great, now a huge difference. Now, the, the reason why this is so good was he was like, do I need to get on drugs? Do I need to get on medications? Mm. And um, I'm like, you know what? You've just started exercising and eating right over the past few months. Let's give it a little longer if you can see what happens. I mean, how do you feel about that? And he's like, yeah, I'm on board. But two months into this with that combination of things and he's like, a totally different person, which makes me feel really, really good. You know. Huh. Okay, makes since you're bringing up how things like this, okay, uh, I've been quiet kind of about uh, one of our other partners because it's new, and I, I tend to be, I think, uh, and Justin is too. Sal is quick, right? I feel like Sal is like, I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so yeah. he's, he's like, and, and he has that like, I'm so two more in tune with my body than you guys. You know what I'm saying? So it's I like, am. okay, whatever, dude. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a little slower. <laughs> <laughs> to uh to like speak to be out an evangelist on, yeah, yeah yeah before yeah. i'm like yes it's for sure working i'm like well it could be that well it could be that also and so i've been consistently actually today is the first day i did not because i actually wanted to see how i felt and i actually feel fucking cloudy right now is the uh the new brain blend by ned yeah mm -hmm. i've been taking that before every single podcast today's the first day i didn't do it and i and i like literally feel cloudy oh, right I now i love it dude 
Yeah, I, I, I think I too. actually noticed a difference. Whoever came up with that formula, man. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I knew that was coming after I. Uh, like a wizard. I, I admitted that, right? I, can't. I I think it's the it's great, dude. It's one of the so best. okay. So explain, you feel you feel it. For so sure. explain to me what you could, you had the and I remember you know by the way the I don't know if the audience knows this either. So a long time ago when when uh, we first were getting into like see this actually goes even further back to like when Sal and I used to have messages back and forth on Facebook about CBD and like he was doing a lot of his research. I remember you telling me about CBG and I remember you telling me like, you're like, that's going to be the next thing. Yeah, watch, mm -hmm. watch when they start seeing all the benefits that come for CBG, they're going to tease it out. It's going to become a whole product. And like, I remember you saying that a long time ago. So this brain blend, if I'm correct, it's higher in CBG. It's, uh, it's a, I believe it's a 50, 50 ratio. So okay. CBD, CBG, which is not normal, right? You no. have to, you have to, you have to pull it out and then. Yeah. Well, that. you have to, you have to breed the plant to have, cause it's got, you know, there's total cannabinoids. And if THC, for example, is really high, which Obviously, this is hemp, so it's it's almost no THC. But you know, marijuana is related to hemp, right? So if THC is high, then the other cannabinoids have to be lower, right? So there's always a ratio, and it's usually CBD. But CBG is a is what they call the master. It's like the the master cannabinoid, and it's the one that can get gets turned into all these other cannabinoids. But in the body, it's got some interesting effects, similar to CBD, but it does seem to have these kind of uplifting effects on its own. So that's why they included that with the CBD blend. But then also in, in there, they included lion's mane. They included Siberian ginseng, go to cola. So these are all compounds that are already proven to improve somebody's mental, a subjective mental well-being. So, because the idea was I wanted to, when, when they first called and said, hey, Sal, what, what kind of product do you want to work on with us? And I said, I, wanted, I want something that'll make someone feel euphoric, energized, and kind of like uh, creative, like yeah. something fun that'll, that people are going to want to take before they do something like a mental task or whatever. And so that's what we came up with. And sure enough, I mean, it definitely works. It's not like caffeine, so you don't feel stimulated from it. Although I will say, I like to pair them together. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I'll just, that's a great. I mean, that's I, I really enjoy yeah. having. Like you said, it's uplifting and it's got that sort of clarity aspect to it. Yeah. It drives the caffeine further. I feel. Yeah. So that's how. I, so I obviously I'm still on my caffeine, and that part I didn't tease out. I just teased out this, and that is the difference. I still feel energetic right now. Like I have yeah. energy. I just feel I don't feel as sharp. Yep. And I, and I swear the co combination of the two of those together have been. Oh, it's it's, yeah, it's been a treat. Yeah, no, it's really good. Stuff. They, they knocked it out of the park, so I look forward to maybe working with them again on some other stuff. Hey, check this out. There's a company we've been working with for a long time called Organifi. They make products with high-quality ingredients, convenient, they're great tasting. Organifi makes superfood blends that make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition to your day. They also have plant-based protein powders, much more. Great supplements, great products for health, wellness, and athletic performance. Go check this company out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Kelly from Missouri. Kelly, how's it going? How can we help you? Hey guys, I just want to say like everybody else, um, really appreciate you guys having me on here. Everything you put out there, I've learned way more from you guys than I have from any of my certifications. So thank you for that. Very cool. Awesome. Um, I will say, Adam, you've made my life with dishes a hell of a lot easier. So appreciate that. I actually don't hate <laughs> dishes as much as I used to. So thank you. Single best advice Dude, I've given the on the dish guy. <laughs> 2000 <laughs> episodes. That's the best advice yeah. I've given. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've listened to pretty much all of them and I got to say that one has really stuck out for me. So I appreciate that. Te teaching people how to tie their shoes. <laughs> <so I'm laughs> if you have an easier way for that, I'm all for it. Okay. Um, so main reason I reached out to you guys, I have recently jumped to online training and I have been training a client. Um, she's about 50, 51 right now, um, who has ex excessive interior pelvic tilt. Um, and I want to say shifting as well. Um, so any sort of movements we do, any sort of squats, um, anything laterally deadlifts, she can't do them without extreme pain, um, either during that movement or later in the day when she starts walking, she'll really kind of feel it shooting up her, her back. Um, she tells me she feels it mostly in the ridge of her sacroiliac. So I've been having her do some moves, some maps, prime pro, um, some 90, 90 for dogs, um, the floor pelvic tilt. And she loves them. She says they feel great. They help her work out, which is awesome. Um, I am struggling with trying to figure out how to get her pelvic tilt 
addressed, um, especially doing this virtually. It's, it's a lot harder than obviously being in person and being able to see the movement as they're doing it and being able to address it in real time. Um, so I've been trying to give her things from map symmetry to address, you know, any imbalances she has. Um, but anything we do seems to aggravate it. So we try to do one leg sit and stands. I try to have her hold on to like a suspension trainer, kind of take some of the weight off. Um, and it's just nothing I'm doing is seeming to get this going. Um, she says she really likes the glute bridge. It seems to help a lot, but she's still feeling that excessive arch in her back, even when she's trying to squeeze her core, squeeze her glutes, try to focus on that. Um, so I'm really just kind of looking for advice where to go from here. Cause I, I feel like I'm sort of failing her almost in this fact that I can't seem to figure out where this pain is coming from or how to address it. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Every once in a while you'll get that, you'll get a client like this mm -hmm. where all of your usual bag of tricks doesn't work and you start to scratch your head and trying to figure out like what the hell's going on. So here's the deal. So first off, your your view on anterior pelvic tilt, change it this way. I'm going to find a way to get her to not feel pain. And then how that changes her posture is how that changes her posture. Because I think if we look at posture and say that's excessive, maybe or maybe not. Now, what is obviously meaning it's probably excessive is, is the pain, right? So it's not worry so much about how it looks. It's worried about how it feels. Um, not that you're way off that, but just it's a, it's a better mentality to go into when you're training a client like this. The second thing is the cueing makes a huge difference mm -hmm. with someone like this. So if she is indeed getting pain because her anterior pelvic tilt is too excessive, if that's indeed the case, what I used to do with clients is when I'd have them get into a position, I would say, okay, exaggerate the, the pelvic tilt. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and make it worse. Now try to do the opposite, which you're doing already with the pelvic tilts on the floor. Now find the middle, try to hold that middle while we do this exercise. And you could do that with every exercise. Any exercise she does, have her find the extreme, then the opposite extreme, then the middle. Physio ball exercises are really good at this because she's going to have to really get comfortable with holding her position, her body in a position that's a little different than the way she's holding it. So that's where I would start. Yeah, I mean, I would just kind of piggyback on that. In, in terms of like the floor press and like, you know, taking her down there, um, and just really staying down there and, and, and having her like isometrically, you know, really kind of press her way down and get her back to kind of, you know, get in that flattened position uh, before the uh, the actual floor bridge itself. Uh, and then just, you know, maybe spending a bit more time just as that as the central focus of, um, you, you know, of your, of your training and then seeing kind of where that kind of progresses and, and how we can kind of, you know, go from there. This is, uh, this is really hard to deal with as a, a online trainer. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is, this is the reason why, you know, in-person training will always be a little bit better than, and you're doing a, a great job. I mean, literally like Sal said, I mean, you're, you're throwing all the, the right tricks at it, trying to figure it out. But the, the truth is if, she let's and we can say something basic uh, overhead press bicep uh, bicep curl if she isn't if she does not know how to control her, her her pelvic like that and she doesn't know how to keep it in that neutral position like Sal was talking about why she does all those exercises it's so hard for you to be able to teach that without like almost touching her right and I mean at least in my experience clients it's it's hard to articulate that over text or email like or and even like video talking it's like that's one of those those skills that you almost have to like be there to kind of get them like this is where I want you to hold it you know and to hold your hold that position tighten your core. Um, is she by chance? Are you? Does she? Is she in a different state? Is she in the same state or city as you? Like, do you know where she's based? No. Um, um. Right now, she is staying in, I believe it's Wisconsin for about a month or so, but she lives in Seattle. Okay. So far away from you. Because yeah. yeah, so far away. Because the the next thing I would do, and this is a if I'm if I'm like online trainer. I would, I would actually try and recommend her to, I would do, which sucks for you because it'd be like, you have to do your research in Seattle. That's why I was asking if she's in your town. Like I know in my town, like I know like the movement specialist person that she should go see, like, and like, listen, go see somebody. I want you to, I want you to tell them X, Y, and Z, or let me get on the phone with them and tell them what's going on and, and, and get her to get somebody in person to help her through some of the stuff like that. Yeah. Otherwise the advice that Sal gives is kind of the, the, the best advice we can give, but you may keep running into this if she's not, it's a, it's a queuing issue. Yeah. Kelly. If she's yeah. not, I'm going to tell you right now, it's, you know what, you know, okay, try this, try, I'm just, I'm, I'm racking my brain. Try this, have her sit on a physio ball, make sure it's appropriate size physio ball. So her knees are at 90 degrees. So not too short, not too tall. Have her set up her phone so that she's videoing herself from the side so that you could see her, her low back and spine. 
have her, as she's sitting on there, ex accentuate or exaggerate the pelvic tilt and then have her go in the opposite direction while she's on the ball and then have her find the middle. Okay, so watch her go extreme one way, extreme the other way, find the middle and let's say hold that and let's try curls or laterals or overhead presses. It really doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is get her to know how to hold that position while yes. doing something else. Yes. Yeah. And then at least you could watch. If you're right. looking from the side, you should be able to see what's going on. Like I remember having a client like this where no matter what we did, she would feel it in her lower back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter. It could be curl, it could be anything. And so I remember doing this exact thing and saying, here, why don't you arch it more? And she'd be like, oh, that hurts more. Okay, now go in the opposite direction. Right. Then she would do that. Then say, find the middle. Now just hold that. And then I'd have to lighten the load because if she went too heavy, she would go back to her old you know, pattern. I did the same, but in the quadruped yeah. position, right? So you're doing like cat cow in a sense, but really trying to find that that middle spot is is where it's at for her to brace and be able to sustain. So, I mean, that and then the wall's your friend too, you know, with the, with the wall oh, press. Yeah. So, you know, just just getting her to, to ritualize that and be able to do that like every single morning, you know, for 10, 15 minutes and just focus on like one or two very impactful type of exercises that addresses this specific issue. I used to also teach a client like this how to do like a reverse crunch first before we get into our workout. Totally. So I'd lay them on so the floor. So they could learn how to connect. Yeah, so I I'd lay them on the floor and then have them do like a really slow and controlled reverse like crunch. Like a roll back. Yeah. yeah, and kind of just so I can get like a, a little pump in the abs and get her to tighten up and really get her to understand what I'm trying, to, how to get her to articulate her spine the way I want and then go into my traditional exercises that I'm teaching her. So that's a that's a tip that yeah. might help, might not. You know? Couple, uh, two other things that could contribute to this that are really hard to find. Okay, one is we tend to believe that somebody with a strong anterior pelvic tilt with pain associated with the pelvic tilt has uh, hamstrings that are too tight, which may be true, but that doesn't mean that they aren't also weak. Sometimes strengthening the hip flexors, I should say, so sometimes strengthening the hip flexors actually alleviates some of this pain. So she could do single leg lifts, so laying all flat on the floor while maintaining good neutral spine and then lifting one leg and then lifting the other leg. Sometimes that can help. And then finally, does she store a lot of, does she seem to store a lot of visceral body fat in her midsection? Um, I mean, she's pretty, pretty thin to begin with. She's very dialed in on her diet. She okay. always has been. Um, she's actually my aunt. So I've known, like she um, has some PT background as well. She coaches volleyball. So she has some sort of understanding okay. of nutrition oh, okay. and everything like that. Um, so not so much helping her with the nutrition side, but she's honestly not like overweight or anything like okay. that. Okay. Cause sometimes visceral body, what visceral body fat will do is it'll push out the, the mm -hmm. core muscles. It'll change their activation. So sometimes that, that makes a big difference. But yeah, what, what we said earlier, I would go with that. Watch her on a, on a physio ball. It's easier on a physio ball than it is standing. Um, and then from there and keep the light, the load light. Cause what you're trying to do is get her to learn how to do other exercises while maintaining a position in her back to where she doesn't hurt. Another way to do that, have, have you ever seen that? I did this video a long time ago. We might have it on our YouTube channel with the PVC pipe. Mm -hmm. Have you seen mm -hmm. me do that before? Yeah, like keeping contact on yeah, the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah having her use that to teach that to kind of get that idea. So those are just, I mean, I know we're like, we're throwing spaghetti on the wall right now because it's it literally is that situation. It's usually a cueing thing. Yeah. yeah. It, and I know I've, I just, I've been here and then finally I get yeah. the right cue well, and they're like, oh, pain's gone. That's a good point though. I mean, props a lot of times. And you said you're using like the suspension trainer too to try and kind of alleviate some of the force and the stress. Um, but yeah, in terms of like the PVC pipe down the spine, I think that, uh, you know, is an appropriate way for her to see if she can try and touch, you know, that with, with her uh, lower back. Okay, great. That's actually great. Yeah. So I hadn't really thought about regressing her back to starting everything back on the physio ball. So that's definitely, I'll have to do that and just kind of make sure she's not in her own head about <laughs> going backwards or anything like well, that. Well, you just said something, I mean, you said something else earlier that now makes a lot of sense. She was an athlete. She's probably been used to being performing at a high level and very fit. You're going to have to regress her because her body's learned to move one way. And if, if there's any type of intensity involved, it's going to move the way it always moves. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to regress her and teach her body how to move a little bit differently to get the pain to go away. So if, if she's lifting intensely, um, it's going to be very hard for her, her body to control that pelvic tilt in a way that, that alleviates pain. Okay. All right. Well, well, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so yeah. much. Thanks for calling in. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Feel better. Thank you. She looks like a female Adam. 
<laughs> what? She got the sleeve. No, She's no, going to be. Is that, why, is that why I thought she was attractive? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you do like yourself I mean, quite a bit. Carry a mirror I mean, around this you. Is, this you is. Um, you guys remember clients like this? Well, yeah. Where you're like, it's a mystery? Yeah. This well, is also what makes uh, online coaching inferior to in in person. This is the yeah. issue, right? I mean, here. she. I mean, she's got all the great tools, like and, and like the way she was. Okay, I'm gonna have her do the 90 90s. I'm gonna have her do this. Like she's she's throwing all the stuff that we have at her to try and get her. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, if you're not there to see it while it's happening and catch it and go like, oh, I yeah. see what's going Cause on. Because you could do any movement, even the right movement. That's in why a way up, that's a little. Wrong. That's why I brought up bicep curls. Yeah. Bicep right. curls and overhead pressing. I'm like this. If this person does have an excessive tilt. And she's feeling that shearing pain like that. She's right. probably doing bicep curls wrong, shoulder pressing wrong, lateral. Yeah. Everything. Right. And a lot of times you'll see it when like the bracing, like you just lose, you disconnect in a certain range of motion totally. of the exercise. And so you're not going to know that unless you're there to really, you know, observe. And 100%. so this client is a client that I, and this is, you can only do this in person. I would do the whole program, no matter what exercise we were doing, I had the PVC pipe. Yeah. It was like that. I would get her in a position where you could do a cable yep, fly yep. and I boop, 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 hit the whole three workout. points. And I'm like, yep. that is our focus more than how much weight and reps we're doing. 100%. Don't lose contact in those three points yep. until she got to the place where she knew how to keep her body in that in that good neutral spine 100%. while doing the movements. All right. Our next caller is Allison from California. Allison, how can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to start out by saying that uh, your podcast and y'all's programming has made a significant difference in my life. So thank you all for everything that you're doing. Oh, thank you. Right. Thank you. Um. I have a question about injury recovery. Specifically, I got a head injury um, and a whiplash injury about a year and a half, not a year and a half, a year and a month ago. Um, I got a pretty bad concussion. I got hit in the head behind the ski boat. Um, mm. I was pretty much unable to walk in and move much for like four to five weeks. Um, and wow. then I started seeing a physical therapist and made significant improvement. So around uh, January, February is kind of back to normal. Um, I grew up a competitive dancer and I was on like a, a dance crew at the time. And I was able to um, rehearse and perform with them for about two months until I hit a wall again. I'm not sure, maybe I re-injured my head doing so. Um, it's just hard to tell with brain injuries because they're just so fickle. Um, but I, again, was kind of out of commission for another two weeks. And then I got cleared by my physical therapist to lift weights. Um, so not do any cardio or like crazy. I used to be a mountain biker too. I love skiing. So I didn't like, I didn't get cleared to do any of that stuff, but I did get cleared to lift weights. Shortly after that, um, I found your podcast um, and I started doing maps aesthetic. I realized I was probably the wrong program because it, there's so much volume, but I did get through it and I felt pretty good. Um, However, that was over this summer. Um, I am in my last year of law school and I started school again about a month ago. And a lot of my symptoms have been coming back up because of the increased schoolwork. So reading, writing, walking, like all give me dizziness, nausea, headaches. Um, I do work. I got discharged from the physical therapist. I still go to the doctor sometimes, but I don't really do much. I don't feel symptoms doing anabolic. I'm working on anabolic right now. I don't really get symptoms doing that unless I'm doing overhead presses. And I think it's because it puts pressure on the yeah. um, vertebrae that slipped in my neck. Um, so I just lift really light when it comes to overhead presses and shrugs. Perfect. Um, the doctor recently just said, stop everything again and just lay in a dark room. And I like the physical therapist had cleared me to lift weights. I started lifting weights. I felt good. It's the school, it's the reading and writing and like walking around the gym that triggers some symptoms. Um, I have to wait seven months to get to a neurologist. So I'm finally going this month. So I'll see what they have to say. But I was wondering if you all had any experience working with people who have head injuries, um, especially with long-term symptoms and what you would suggest for me going forward, um, lifting weights, um, because what I had you know, <laughs> working out and lifting has been incredible for my mental health head injuries come with like a multitude of mental health issues. And I feel like I stay sane by working out, but I also don't want to like re-injure myself or do yeah, anything that's also yeah. bad for me. Really, really, really good question. And but, really, really tough to it's, answer yeah, exactly. because you were, I mean, if your doctor's telling you not to do that right now for us to try and come over and say you, you should potentially do this or that is. Well, I so here. Okay. So, a couple things. One, it's not out of the ordinary for someone in their last year of law school to feel 
uh, dizzy and lightheaded and nauseous when they're doing their, their school work. So, Fair enough. Uh, no, all joking aside, and it's very intense, by the way. My cousin went through law school. I know how intense it is. So, um, all joking aside, we're not doctors. So, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to look up and read on your own. Okay. okay. I want you to look up the effects of a ketogenic diet mm -hmm. on um, uh, brain injury. Neurogenesis. Yeah. Okay. So, look up ketogenic diet on, uh, and its effects on brain injury, on um, concussion. See if you can find any anything on that. I'd also like you to look up um, lion's mane and its effects on the same stuff. So lion's mane is a mushroom, so you can look that up. Um, and then look up cannabinoids, in yep. particular CBD and the hemp cannabinoids uh, that you'll find in in, um, in the hemp plant and look at those effects. And just read up on it and and see for yourself. And then if you want to experiment with some of that stuff, obviously that's that's totally up to you. I understand completely what you're saying about exercise, okay? You're thinking like, this is super beneficial, but I don't want to do something dangerous to myself. Mm -hmm. The doctor's kind of scaring me a little bit. You can always get a second opinion. That's number one. So you can always get a second opinion from a, from a medical expert. And then the other thing is, if you do get clearance, you can always go much easier, much lighter. Now, you've already kind of pieced that together with overhead presses. I would go much easier and lighter on overhead presses, on deadlifts, on rows, and on shrugs, okay? Those are the exercises that are probably the most risky just based off of what I know off of your injury. Now, that doesn't mean you can't practice them. That doesn't mean you can't make the tension feel appropriate just by slowing the reps down and kind of feeling the muscles work. So you can still make it work. Just means go light and make your form as per like more than perfect, like super, super, super perfect. So you're gonna have to go really, really light. Uh, but, I, but I'll say, you know, do read up on those things and then see if you can get another opinion because uh, it's it's not uncommon for one doctor to say something and another doctor to give you a different opinion. That, that's actually quite common. Yeah, I'm glad you brought those up, Sal. And again, I'm not a doctor or anything else, but I do have personal experience uh, having concussions and, and going through a bit of like short-term memory loss and um, you know struggling in school because I couldn't stay focused because um, you know of having those concussions and trying to work through that. And, and I have had some success with, you know, going and investigating myself with, with, you know, can cannabinoids, uh, cannabinoids. Know, cannabinoids. Thank yeah. you. you I just say, say that right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that, that did help quite a bit in terms of like, um, my own like memory and, and, and going through that path. But what I did notice too, with the intracranial pressure, when I would get into heavy lifts, I had to back off quite a bit. And so that was just something that I just listened to my body, kind of went through that and then, um, really just focused a little bit more on hypertrophy and, and, you know, it, but again, I was able to kind of regain, I felt like, you know, some, some good, um, you know, health again and, and, and kind of work my way back towards, you know, intensifying my workouts. So I think really, you know, just weigh it out, you know, listen to your doctor, but also too, like there's ways to kind of still be able to get exercise in that's healthy for your body. Yeah, get a second opinion. I mean, at the end of the day, like, uh, exercise is uh, not different than us moving around, right? I mean, you're, you're moving, you can just move. I think doctors that say stuff like this, they just assume you're pushing, you're doing super heavy weight, but it's like, uh, there's got to be somewhere in the middle there where it's okay for you to still do some of these. In fact, beneficial probably for you to do some of these movements for you, not just for your brain, but also for your overall health and sanity. Uh, I think that there's there's got to be somewhere on the spectrum where it's okay, and I would I would want a doctor to to give me that green light on yeah, what and, that looks and like. And I'm look okay. It's rare that appropriate movement and app appropriate is the key word here. Okay. It's super rare that appropriate exercise is detrimental. I don't care what your condition is and what your situation is. It's rare. That being said, it doesn't mean always. There are cases, and I don't know your case. I don't know what your doctor knows. I don't know your history, detailed history. I don't know what your tests you've done. So I also am going to be very careful because there could be a situation where increasing blood pressure through exercise, exertion, whatever – could you could it could put you in a risk category that you don't want to be in, and we are dealing with the brain here. Okay, so I again I'm going to implore you get a second opinion, mm -hmm. and then when you get the second opinion, make sure you say to the doctor, "Is it okay that I work out under the guidance of somebody who's got experience working with somebody like myself?" Say it like that because you might get a different answer. Okay, you might get a totally different answer because oftentimes what Adam's saying is true. Oftentimes. 
they're playing the safe game because they're like looking at you and they're like, well, she's going to go work out on her own. She, I don't know if she knows exactly what she's doing. She's going to push herself too hard. Like it's better safe than sorry. But if you're like, hey, I'm going to be under the guidance of somebody who's going to, who, who has some experience with this, then they might say yes. For example, I'm pretty sure your doctor would, would not say no to a physical therapist. Right. Which means exercise is okay. Right. As long as it's appropriate. Right. So, so you can either have another conversation with this doctor and position it that way or get a second opinion and, but get that clearance first. We're not, at, we're not at liberty yeah. to tell you what, yeah. to, what something to, to do important. that the doctor says not to do. Okay, great. That's really helpful. Thank you. No problem. And you have MAPS anabolic, right? Do you have MAPS symmetry? No, I don't. I'm going to send that to you because when you, when, and if you get clearance, I like symmetry for you. Oh, I do too. Mm -hmm. I like symmetry a lot. Especially for you. the first phase where she's at right now. Yeah. And it's going to train, um, proprioceptive ability, um, differently, which I think is going to be good for your brain too. Amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. That's tough because I think you're right, Adam. We're guessing, but I think that's exactly what it is. The doctor's like, eh, it's better safe than sorry. Because if yeah. she's like, hey, I'm working with a physical therapist, that's usually the doctor's probably like, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean- They're trying to be cautious. When, when, when you walk around, you're you're moving and working muscles, okay? When you go to the gym yeah. and you do uh, exercises, you're moving <laughs> you're yeah. moving muscles. It's a, so there's a spectrum there, right? And totally. They, and, and so you can't tell me that uh, the, the best uh, remedy for whatever someone's case is, and this is, like you said, pretty much everyone. Of course, there's the exception of the rule, which right. is a half a percent of the 1%, right? So we have to be careful, but so you're you, right. Yeah, so you have to be careful with how we, we give advice, but there, there's there got to be somewhere on that spectrum where she is okay. With, and I bet you're right, too, that if he were to say, like, hey, I, I was going to see a physical therapist, can I do that? Well, what's the physical therapist do? Exercises with Yeah, her. same thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just appropriate. Yeah, he just, knows she's under guidance. That's right. Specific things, like avoiding what you were saying is high risk, probably mm -hmm. doing things that are going to complement. Because here's the, here's the other side of it, with the limited knowledge that we have. So I want to say that first. But here's the, here's the other side of it. Not moving, not exercising is not only not good for the body, it's not good for the brain. Right, right. So what she's trying to do is, is reduce inflammation, improve uh, glucose utilization of the brain, which is, by the way, why I had her uh, research ketogenic diet, because yeah, sometimes that makes a big difference. Yep. But you're trying to improve your health. Well, exercise does that. You're trying to improve your brain health. Exercise does that. So you don't oh, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because what may happen is in the pursuit of just being completely safe, she accelerates uh, or the, the, down, the downhill or she makes it worse because now she's not moving. So now, I mean, anybody's brain gets less healthy when they don't exercise. So that's why I'm like, look, get another opinion because I think if you position the question differently, I've done that by, by the way with clients where they go to the doctor and I say, don't ask like that. Ask like this and see what happens. And if you ask it a certain way, then they're okay with it. Is the saying of that metaphor because the water's dirty? What do you mean? Why do you throw the Why do you throw the baby out of the bath? Oh, because the water's what, dirty, so the, therefore the baby. Yeah, you throw, so you would throw out the bath water, but it's don't dirty. throw the baby out with it. Right, right. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, because that sucks. It's <laughs> a really old one. I wonder if anybody's ever done that. I, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! A, ah! <laughs> Our next caller is Eli from Virginia. Eli, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Good, good, good. I just want to start out by saying thanks for having me and thanks for everything you guys do. Um, actually, because of you guys, I was walking through the store the other day, saw a magic spoon, picked it up, and it's already gone. It's really <laughs> <hurt me. laughs> picked it up, went in my mouth, then it's gone. Good Basically. Stuff. <laughs> um, but to, for my question, uh, I started 2022 off pretty shitty. Um, within two weeks of the year, I run my Heelys, uh, playing indoor soccer. So um, I had to deal with that. I was living at home for a while while I got back on my feet and um, gained a lot of weight. Now fully recovered um, about like eight months after uh, surgery. And now I'm just trying to make sure it doesn't happen again and how to fight this fear of rupturing it again. Boy, it, I, you, it gives me PTSD just hearing you say that because to this day, um, you know, I, I was messing around the other day and jumping up in, in my house to see how high I get up to grab something. And it, the, I still have this like 
because I tore my – and I've had lots of injuries, so I've, I've dealt with lots of injuries. So many injuries. And <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. There's stacks of them. And the Achilles, I tell you what, it's, it, it's, uh, it's different. It's it's different than all of them. And now, why is that when you went when you did it? Is it because it just – because it pops and you're like – Yeah, one, how it happens, I think, and then it's just uh, – yeah, it, there's. I feel like it feels. I mean, it's like, a big visible tendon. Maybe that's part of it too, huh? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I can't wrap my brain around. I've heard other people say because I, I mean, I've toured my ACL, my a MCL, like, and that. I mean, my knees feel great. Yeah. Like, and I don't. I don't even think about that before I go jump. Uh, but before I sprint or jump, I, I there's this little thing in the back of my head that always thinks, and I think it's because of that because it's it was like self injury, right? Yeah. Like I, I was just running up the court and it happened. So, okay, a couple of things. So I do have a lot of thoughts around this because, of course, I I, I have the same PTSD. So uh, if I were to get back into playing ball or really take care of this like I should, um, I would I would follow a lot of the stuff that Corey Schlesinger puts out. Um, he did so he tore his Achilles. Um, the first time that we, we met him, like, so we, we interviewed him years ago and when he came in, he came in on the little scooter and he had just tore his Achilles, uh, right after, right before it was right after mine. And, uh, he, he actually showed like a lot of his protocol of rehabbing himself. Now he, he's an, uh, NBA, uh, uh, coach, right? So for, uh, he's a, um, sports trainer. So this dude is playing ball and has to get back in that kind of shape. So his recovery and the way he trained, his body is like ideal for making sure that doesn't happen to you because you got to be careful, especially if you put weight on. Because that's part of why I think I tore. I was actually in good shape, but I had I was heavier, and I was running. And I just my uh, my Achilles had not been trained for basketball. It had been trained to be a buff dude, and it just went like that. So you definitely need to take care of that and train around that so your body will adapt before you go into explosive movements. And just build that into your routine. So I, I would make sure that that's the foundation of every workout. Every workout, I would start with my Achilles rehab stuff, and then I would go into, say, MAPS Anabolic or whatever program of ours that you might be following. And then until I feel – and you should start to feel – and you'll see he, he has progressions of, like, the movements that he's doing – you know, starts off very basic of like, you know, floor tapping and then you work your way up to doing body weight stuff and then yeah, more explosive. Band assisted yes. type work with that too. Yeah. He has really good information and, and uh, content out there regarding that. So yeah, there's definitely like a slow pace to this, but uh, you know, weight is going to contribute to a lot more force around, you know, the joints there. So that's definitely something to consider in terms of like a focus of yours is to, you know, really just kind of lose the weight and get back into a little bit more explosive training progressively. Yeah. Eli, I'll I'll get more general. Um, it, it's and it's right along. It's obviously going to be right along the lines of what they're saying. Generally speaking, getting over any fear um, is the opposite of fear is confidence, right? So you, you get conf, feeling confidence, not being fearful. Feeling fearful is not feeling confident. So how do you build confidence slowly? What does that look like? Small wins. So if you look at someone who's fearful of anything, you know you've you've heard of exposure therapy before. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, it's like Can somebody, yeah. somebody who's like super, super it's, scared of spiders. You just throw spiders. Yeah, on. yeah. They'll like look at maybe like a cartoon of a spider, and then they'll get used to that, and then a picture of a spider, and eventually they'll get to like a real. So you you gotta you gotta take this slow, and allow your confidence to build. You're not gonna jump back into anything that wouldn't be appropriate anyway, but it's gonna take it's gonna take your time, and and do things that you that slightly challenge you, but don't freak you out completely. So if it's like okay, well. I, I'm not going to jump because that really freaks me out, but I think I can push a sled that's light and go slow. It challenged me a little bit, but I think it's it's okay. Start with that. And then when that feels like no big deal, and like this doesn't even challenge me at all, then progress to the next thing. So slowly progress yourself slowly to the point where you build confidence step by step by step, and then eventually you'll get rid of the fear. That's the only way to do it. And that's, that's, how, that's how you get rid of any fear. Yeah, because like my main thing is like when I kind of do like – body squats and when i get down i can feel like the tightness in the back of my leg yeah. and I, i'm mm -hmm. like oh maybe i shouldn't go as low and then like i have a personal trainer and she's just like no lower and i'm just like Ugh. yeah well, well look, she, she okay she's right and you're what you feel is probably this and i remember this too like the scar tissue in there so that's gotta stretch ta yeah taking it through full range of motion and challenge that through like a, a basic you know a bilateral movement like that is actually a good a good idea and some of the stuff uh, by the way like knees over toe guy has mm -hmm. his, his some, some of his content will help in that area so i yes i would push that what i'd be careful of is explosive stuff 
So that yeah. until you do the proper rehab, until you lean out a little bit, doing something explosive uh, is what will potentially tear you. Stretching it and pushing its kind of range of motion will be good for it, which is what you, whatever she that's what it sounds like she was. Yeah, you could you could practice at home by by getting in a body weight deep squat and getting comfortable with that bottom position. So with no resistance. So that's one way you could kind of get more confident with that position. I used to, I used to, and I still actually do this now. I do these uh, isometric calf holds at the top because it would, it feels like it's going to explode when I'm even flexing it as hard as I can. And so I would actually get all the way up on my tiptoes and get these isometric contractions at the top to get more comfortable too with taking it all the way through that range of motion and squeezing in there. And then obviously the benefits of isometric. So yeah, th those are the things that I, if I was going to really take it serious and, and take care of myself, like I should, uh, I would I would go through all of what Corey was doing and and and, it, and the way I would build it into my routine is that is how I would start every workout. I would spend five to ten minutes doing my Achilles rehab slash warm up priming type stuff, and then I would get into my normal training. Yeah. Uh, one more one question, Eli. Do you do you are you pretty good at tracking your water intake, making sure you stay hydrated? Um. Yeah, I carry around a water bottle with me all the time at work. I really don't know how much it is, but I just fill it up constantly and just drink it. All right. Well, I would aim for, you know, close to a gallon a day because uh, what you'll find when it comes to muscles feeling tight and feeling uncomfortable, so sometimes being really hydrated makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So just one thing you could test out for yourself. But thanks for calling in, Eli. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. So, Adam, for you you feel comfortable doing everything except for the explosive stuff at this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like squatting deep doesn't bother me. Lunges with, you know, pushing my knee excessively over my toe doesn't bother me. Not anymore. Like, at the beginning, though, I do remember yeah. that where, like, you feel that end range of motion feels like it's been shortened. Yeah. And then you also have that little scar tissue buildup. So between mm -hmm. the, you, you, so, and, and it, it almost feels like it's going to tear or pop again. So I know it psychologically kind of fucks with you. What I know though, is that I know that that's all good to push that, that way where you have to be careful of pushing it is explosive stuff. So if, if I were to go sprint really hard or yeah. push, you just haven't trained that explosive stuff enough yet. Yeah. And I know I'm heavy. Like, so, and yeah. I know that's what it led to before. And if he put weight on like that, that's the most dangerous thing. So this, and I, what I did was totally stupid, right? I should know better. Like I it would remember uh, this was, uh, oh, yeah. you, you know, back, uh, back when I came off the testosterone, I was like feeling depressed because your I testosterone was super low. Oh yeah. My testosterone, which by the way is also correlated with the Achilles tendon. Roughly. Right. Right. So you have <laughs> yeah. that working against me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm battling depression a little bit. I don't even have the motivation to go lift, feel terrible. And so I, I go, okay, I'm going to play basketball. And I was like, oh, I'll go in a, to get to get in basketball shape. My my theory, shame on me, is oh, I'll go play basketball just like at mild speed. Which okay, that doesn't help. I'm not good at that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so I get in and I'm doing that. And the the thing that killed me was I was so much heavier and I just I didn't have that that I hadn't trained explosively yeah. like that. And then mm -hmm. and then you add in load test on top of it, and then that that went. Well, yeah, yeah and also consider like all those planes of motion of stability. So lateral stability, rotational stability, yeah. like those are really important when it comes to any kind of injury or anything you're trying to rehab to to really spend the extra amount of time, you know, strengthening uh, all that range of motion so your body responds appropriately because the explosive part really adds that yeah. excess amount of pressure that will unhinge at that yeah, point. Yeah. Justin tore his pants explosively once. That's about it. In the bathroom just yeah. like five minutes ago. So I'm not gonna sit up. Our next caller is David from Texas. David, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey guys. Uh been listening to y'all for you know quite a while, at least since twenty eighteen. Really appreciate all the content y'all put out. Thank and you. I, I I even love the you know start of the episode, so I, I get some of my best information from you. So, <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, about a year ago, I started getting some pain in my left elbow. Uh, I got diagnosed with tennis elbow. Um, a couple months later, progressed into my right elbow as well, and then about two and a half weeks ago, I got diagnosed with a partial low grade partial tear of whatever that tendon is that connects my elbow to my hand. I got a PRP shot on Friday, um, and I'm basically just looking for advice on how to help it heal the best I can and where to go from here. Are you a heavy deadlifter? What do you? Uh... I enjoy deadlifting. Basically, I, I like heavy lifting. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, okay, so I'm reading your question, the one that you sent in, and you, it, you, you continue to train 
while doing physical therapy and stretching. That was what the that's that was the problem. When you have an injury like this, which tennis elbow, by the way, this the the term tennis elbow, it's just a name for a symptom. So sometimes we get diagnosed with something and it's like, oh my God, you know, what's it's it's a very common it's a super common. Mm -hmm. I had this uh, many, many times because I like to pull heavy and I did judo and jiu-jitsu, which is super grip intensive. And lots of tennis. And I <laughs> never played tennis. <laughs> <laughs> super athletic. Could you yeah. imagine me playing tennis? Yeah. So um, what I had to do was lay off all the heavy pulling and like really lay off. And um, yeah. I got deep tissue massage and work on my forearms and stretching. And once it got better, it was better. But if I didn't lay off the lifting – then, then it didn't matter. Then I was just managing the pain and I would have to like, okay, let me warm it up. Let me stretch it. Okay. It feels good enough to lift heavy. And then oh, again, now it hurts again. And I was just being this kind of cycle. So right now, because you got the shot, I wouldn't do any lifting. When you go back to lifting, I'd go super light and mm -hmm. I would seek out a really good body work specialist that can work on your forearms. Cause it sounds like they're just really tight. It sounds I, like they're really, really tight. So I have, okay. This actually happens to me all the time now. Uh, more than it ever did in my life. And and I, I've now pinpointed like exactly why it happens and I catch it before I push myself to where, where you've gone. That's why I asked you right away, do you like the heavy deadlift? Because yeah. what it happens is every time I start getting consistent with my heavy deads and I'm not addressing wrist mobility and shoulder mobility and making sure mm -hmm. that they're, they are flexible, mobile, and strong, I my my deadlift weight gets up there so hard and it just puts so much stress on the elbow. Mm -hmm. Not having right. that 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 wrist strength and mobility and that shoulder strength and mobility. And so anytime I neglect to to stay on top of that while also lifting super heavy, this is how my body starts talking to me. And if I do a good job of taking care of those two things, I can progress up there. The ways I regress out of this is I, I this is like as soon as I start feeling that pain, it's like it's okay. I'm I'm, I'm I get disappointed in myself. I know better. I know what I should do. So then I I like uh, my discipline is you're not allowed to de straight bar deadlift at him. Now I have to go to single leg dumbbell deadlifts, which forces me to regress the weight like crazy. Also takes myself out of that fixed position with the bar. And then now the way I earn my way back to the barbell is putting my shoulder and wrist mobility work in. Okay. Now, David, one thing I'd like to add to that is when you get to the point where it feels okay, um, I think it's, it would be a good idea to incorporate um, some light reverse curls into your lift, uh, into your workouts. Yeah. To strengthen yeah. those, yeah, Zotmans. Don't we have Zotmans in something? Zotmans are good, or just reverse curls, even on on a easy curl bar. Just the just you, you, you know you, you want to be able to strengthen those extensors. The brachioradialis is part of that, right? And that yeah. those. So so when I started, when I went got back into reverse curls, that that pain went away because I had okay. I had to strengthen it. But I had to wait till I got better before I could do that. If I had done reverse curls with a little bit of that that tennis elbow pain. It would have not worked out. Which, well. by the way, the the total regression to that is the wrist mobility and strength stuff, right? You start working on right. the wrist yeah. mobility and strength stuff; those extenders get included, and then the progression to that is to do Zotmans, reverse curls, and yeah. include that. The, I like Zotmans because there's movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's not you're not in a sense, fixed yeah. position. So I, I, I mean, it's neither one are wrong or right or more than the other. It's just I prefer the Zotmans because of what I know I need to be addressing. But do you have Prime Pro? I actually got both Prime and Prime Pro, like a week before I got diagnosed. So, <laughs> so you li live in the shoulder and wrist area for you for this, mm -hmm. this specific okay. reason. Yeah. Live it, live in there, spend time doing that. And I mean, I, I just, I don't know if that works for you to, to give yourself like boundaries or rules like that, but that, you know, that's what I do to myself is I, I cause I love the heavy dead left too. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, what I tend to do is neglect the things I know I need to do heading into it. And then I normally push it until my body starts talking to me and they go, ah, fuck, I gotta go back the other way. And so, right, yeah. yeah just, now I, I guess kind of just adding on to everything, my timing couldn't have worked out worse. I'm uh, in the hiring process for some law enforcement jobs and my you know, PT tests are starting to come up. Is there any way to kind of speed this process up or am I just kind of living in the moment? Yeah, I would stay hydrated. Um, soft tissue work is going to be pretty good. Very, very light band exercises. Yeah. Okay, but, ha but really be careful. Okay, so make sure you don't overdo anything. So band exercises will be okay. Like um, curls or yeah, like curls, reverse curls. Do the wrist mobility movements in Maps Prime Pro. Start slow so you can gauge what the appropriate amount of volume intensity is. So start okay. with less than you think. See how you feel, and then kind of gauge it from there. And then with your PT test, you could go ahead and practice those tests. 
maybe take out yeah. the portions that'll aggravate your elbow because you're going to definitely want yeah, to stay push ups and pull ups are the big ones. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would be careful with the pull ups. You could try wrist wraps, um, to kind of take the pressure off of your grip. And then of course, okay. when it comes to game time, you know, then, I, then you can go for it. I also would think that you would get great benefit from, because if you're a heavy lifting guy and you look like you're probably a pretty strong dude, just leaning yeah. out would actually make you good at those body weight things. Oh, so yeah, yeah. More pull and, and, yeah. So that would be kind of my focus right now, since, you know, risking right, it's an pushing, easier one to control. It's your that, dietary it's, habits, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's an easy one to control. We cut back on the calories a little bit, maybe increase some, you know, cardiovascular activity. Easy way to get good at pull-ups. That's right. Weight. That's right. You're already a strong dude. Uh, you're, that's you're not you, worrying about trying to get stronger while also this fixing this injury issue at the same time is kind of counterproductive. It'd be so much easier to do your mobility work, fix the problem by doing the exercise we're talking about, and then lean out by cutting the calories and, and doing more yeah. cardiovascular. Here, that'll I'll, improve that. I'll add one more little hack uh, that that that'll it'll help. It's nominal, but it'll help. Do you have access to red light therapy? Uh, the gym I go to has a little, like a infrared personal sauna mm. thing no not the, it's, it, no yeah. not the same thing so go to um go to juve j-o-o-v-v dot com forward slash mind pump we work with them red light yep. therapy has been proven in studies to accelerate healing um the key okay. is though to use it regularly so they do have at home units and they have they make small ones yeah, you, little so you can localize yeah, it right a little there. portable one on your right elbow. so it's the juve go i think it's, we have actually it's yeah. one, well, there's one right next to adam right yeah. there um, and you could shine that on your arm once or twice a day, and um, it's backed by data. Studies do show that it heals uh, it heals injuries faster. So you could try that out. Yeah, too. if you were a pro athlete that we were like we had we had a crunch time here and we're trying to do as much, that it added with I think a, a, what yeah. Sal said with the massage because that'll help speed that up too. Yep. Like you're doing the work, all the mobility drills yeah. of that. Then you see her to massage out, and then the juve light. And like, if you had any restriction in your movement, obviously the mobility you're going to address all that with it. But like you know, even for me, I found KT tape or like some kind of kinesio tape just mm -hmm. to get through ranges of motion helps a bit to increase you know blood flow but that's about it they've covered pretty much yeah, everything but go, else. yeah go to go to juve go to juve go to their website and take a look and see what you think i think if you do all the other stuff adding that should should probably speed up your recovery by a good 10 percent. okay yeah i'll take anything i can get excellent man. Uh, but yeah. hey guys again i i appreciate it i don't want to take too much of your time but uh love the show you guys do great stuff no so. problem and thanks Thank for you. your service man i appreciate you calling in thank you yeah, i appreciate it guys y'all take it easy you got yep. it yeah, that's a uh, boy. That, that's a that's, tough one for me because that's close to home for me. Just, well, that's same so, here because you know what it's it is. Very common. It's if it's your if it's your forearms and your grip. That's almost every exercise. That's why it gets so annoying. Well, it, yeah. well, yeah. Why? I, and I just feel like if you love heavy deadlift, it just it it exacerbates that. So of course, it, I mean, because you, you're in that fixed. I mean, position. when are you gonna hold something that heavy? Yeah, and that heavy. Do you think though too? Like I always notice it in deadlifting, but if if I don't, if I'm not real focused on my mechanics, my form of like really having that strict lockout position my elbows if oh, i have yeah. a little bit of flex yes. it tends to really add you know yes you know, yes in fact force there I, in yeah. fact uh, a cue that i've learned is to bend the bar extend the elbow so yep. extend and bend yeah bend, bend the yep. bar to and then pull yeah right. yeah because if i start with a little bit of a of a bend then i can i can start to aggravate it but you got to take the time off first. That was that was always my issue. I don't want to take any time off yeah and you know yeah, uh, you know i could tell true. he's like a, a big strong dude so like literally lean out right now would be and you want to get good at your test and most oh yeah pull for what up, you can do right now pull like up climbing advice, running yeah. like that's the yeah. main stuff they do he right 15 pounds is instantly stronger than yeah especially things. someone who's already probably a pretty strong dead liver something like that like we're, we're not going to progress you that much totally. with an injury for that that would be the smarter play totally look if you like our information head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides we have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal and they're all free you can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can only find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another yeah. thing. You'll see less injury as well.